My name is Susan Schrader. I'm a fourth and fifth grade math teacher at Columbia Elementary in Caldwell Parish. Today, the lesson I'm videoing is with fourth grade students at the culmination of a unit on geometric measure where students have been working um, hard to learn to identify angle types, how to identify angle locations, um, to measure using a protractor, and they will be able to identify their location. Also, describe the relationship between a circular shape and angles that it's comprised of. This lesson connects to the overall unit goals because this is the culmination. This is our final project um, for this unit. We have, we have gone through all of the coursework and students have worked very hard to um, develop their skills and to meet the objectives throughout the unit. We are a rural district. Um, resources are rather limited. Um, but in my classroom, we follow the Zern model. So half of my, roughly half of my class uh, utilizes a digital format of a lesson independently while wearing headphones and taking notes. While another portion of my classroom works at the teacher table with me, and then uh, another set of the classroom will work uh, independently or in small groups on developing those skills. We uh, do these in a rotational pattern, so students will start in one place and then go to the second and the third in a rotation, and they are very um, accustomed to this pattern. I hope that um, you enjoy this lesson. We have worked hard to get ready for it, and myself and the kids are super excited to share with you what happens in our classroom. Guys, how are you doing today? Good. Everybody's good, I'm so glad to see you. I'm excited about making this video lesson with you. Today we're going to wrap up our angle measure. We've been working super hard to get ready. I'm excited to see what you can do. Let's go. Stand up where you are and push your chair under. To, to identify how to measure angles and we were trying to get good at making angles. Did we learn that you had to be a little precise with it or you could just go all willy-nilly any way you wanted? You had to decide. Jacob, what would happen if I wasn't being careful drawing or measuring my angles? You could, your line could get off and then you, you could get off by a just throw the whole thing off. Now, look carefully at these quilt blocks. Do you see where the people who quilted these quilts made a bunch of big old mistakes? Do they make a bunch of big mistakes? Yes. No, if they had made big mistakes, what would it look like? jumbles of patterns, right? It, it wouldn't be precise. It wouldn't all match. Do you see? It's very tedious to cut and measure those, those beautiful angles and make sure that you keep them all precise. If you don't, you end up with something that doesn't look right. And so we've really been working hard to, to make sure that we have the skill 
if we wanted to make a quilt, Nick, do you think we could do it? Well, that's good. I'm glad that you think so. Because today, we're going to make a quilt. Yay! Yeah. Today it's time for you guys to show what you know about angle measure and the use of a protractor. Maddie, would you go ahead and take a pencil and pass the tray around? And Jesse, how about you take a protractor and kick one for yourself and pass them around? So guys, I have provided you with a quilt block template. Um, you'll notice that right in the center of the circle, please don't start working until I finish. You'll notice that right in the center of the circle there is something special. What is that? A vertex. What will we use that vertex for? We'll use it for measuring our angles. Okay, so listen. Um, with the supplies that you have, you have a quilt a block template, you have a pencil, you have a protractor. Your requirement for this project is you must use three of the four angle types. Let's remind ourselves. We have an A, an acute angle, we have a right angle, we have an obtuse and, and a straight angle. Very good. So you must use three of the four. Your entire quilt block must be filled in with angles that you've created with your protractor, and then you must measure them and write your measurement in the outside ring for each angle. When you are finished with all of your angle measure, what do they need to equal when you sum them? 360 degrees. Very good. Are you ready to begin? Yes. Okay, you have your supplies. Get to work. This group is working at a small group work table. They've been working with a center activity that is a sorting of angle measures. So they have um, pictures of angles and they had to decide if they were acute, right, or obtuse. And they have protractors that they could use should they be confused about um, what type they were looking at. So the uh, obtuse ones are like about that wide open. Mm -hmm. Okay. One, because we, we didn't know which one was going to be the right one because we couldn't like, figure out the straight ones. Okay, and so how then did you guys determine whether it was um, acute or obtuse? We use a, we use a protractor, protractor to measure, measure. You used a protractor to measure it. That was a good idea. Um, did you guys all three use the protractor to measure the same angles? Sometimes I'd still disagree, and then we would show them exactly how we did it and how that happened. I love it. So you guys really were democratic about the whole process. You worked well together. Thank you. And this is another um, small group that is working together using protractors to measure angles and. Um, there's six different angle cards that they can use, and they all have a protractor and a worksheet to record it. And then once they've recorded the angle, then they have to decide if that is an acute, a right, or an obtuse angle. Kaylee, was there a time that maybe um, one person from the group didn't agree on angle measure? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and so how did you guys solve that problem? Well, like... Each, um, we each measured it, and, um, like, on number six, did it in three, it was 150, I got 150, and Alyssa got 150, and Simone got 160, okay. so we each measured it again, okay. and then we all came out with 150. Oh, that's really good. And Alyssa, did you like how you guys worked together to solve those problems? Yeah. Do you feel like you're really getting strong in your skills with angles and protractors? Yes. I'm so proud of you. So at my teacher table, the students who are working with me are now using their protractors and their quilt block templates to create a quilt block using angles. Um, their task is to create 
a quilt box block that is completely filled with angles, they must use three of the four angle types. Once they have filled their block, they need to measure all of their angles and then get the sum of all of the angles to equal 360 degrees. Everybody's working so hard. I really love it. Why was it important for us to um, add all of the angles together? Why, why is it important for it to equal 360 degrees? So it doesn't be a full circle. Ah, because one full turn around any circle. Vertex around any vertex yeah. has to equal. Does it matter what shape it is? No. No. What if I made a quilt block with squares? Could I still arrange squares around a vertex completely? Yes. I could. Very good. You guys rock. At the end of the period, we pulled all of the quilt block templates together and created a class quilt showing our angles and angle measures. Um, the students worked really hard to produce the quality work and they're very proud to, to talk about it now. Would you please turn and talk to your partners? Um, how could we use angle measures in real life? How could we apply this to our real lives? Turn to your shoulder partner and have a little short discussion. Guys, go ahead and turn to your shoulder partners. Let's have a discussion about how we could use the skills that we have developed in geometric measurement for angles and protractor use. How could we use that in real life? Talk to your shoulder partner. How could I use this in real life? You can use this for like floors. Floors? Lizzie, what do you think? You can use it for houses. You could. To do what? Build. Oh, to build a house. I, I could use angles and angle measures to build a house. Jet, your idea was kind of interesting. To, like, uh, to make a design of a shoe. You could design shoes. That was a really good one. Jacob and Jackson, what do you guys think? Luke and, and Nick. Um, we were kind of thinking of like a house and the roof of it and the windows because if the roof is like straight up, it just kind of wouldn't look right. But if it's kind of like bit down, kind of like a pyramid, then it would look like it's not a roof. And also, what would be wrong with a flat roof? It was just completely flat. What would not run off of it? The water. The water mm. would just build up on it until it eventually. Right. So you just also made a connection to science, didn't you? Good job. Jesse and Kaylee, what do you think? Um, well, we used to have like a stained glass window because um, some of them, like you have like acute angles and then like you have um, acute angles and obtuse angles and you have all those different angle types. So at the conclusion of this video, I can see that my students, uh, even one who joined us just yesterday, I can easily see that they have mastered this concept and that I can safely and successfully move on to my next unit without worrying about leaving a gap. Um, my children, I call them my children, my students were eager to make this video today. They have been excited about it all week. Um, they performed exactly as I expected them to. Um, we may have a few little uh-ohs here and there, but you know that that's life and that's that's what we do here um, ultimately our goals were met and I couldn't be happier thank you for watching our video and I hope you have a blessed day